So let's talk about that veteran quarterback market, and let's talk about the biggest domino that has to fall with this, and that is Kirk Cousins. Crazy, right? 35 years old, coming off this Achilles, and he's the talk of the combine. But he has played so well that recently, and he was playing at such a high level last year, that if you're, one, if you're Atlanta, you have an offensive line that you've built, you have a set of weapons that you feel good about, your defense is ascending. If you drop in borderline top 10, that's what, that's what every single one of these teams is going to say. They can afford him. If we drop borderline top 10 quarterback play into this mix, what does it end up equaling? Mm -hmm. And I think that's why so many teams are going to talk themselves into him if they can find a way to make it work. Correct. And then it, it, it makes sense in Atlanta too, right? Because you've got Raheem Morris who spent time with Kirk in Washington for years. Mm -hmm. You have Zach Robinson who obviously has the Sean McVay offense familiarity, which is what Kirk is familiar with. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of change that needs to happen. No. And, 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 don't under, I don't want to ever undersell that because it is a big part of this process. It just makes it so much easier for everyone to understand when that language is all the same. Um, look, Minnesota wants to bring him back. There's, there's no doubt. But I think there's a world where Minnesota understands that they may have to move on, that yeah. it just may not make the most business sense for them to, to stick with Kirk. And look, Kirk is a good businessman. You know, and, and he's one made, of the best. He's made it clear that he loves Minnesota. There's no doubt, right? He's he's shown us on Instagram. He's shown us through his documentary, or not his documentary, his Netflix show. You know, they love it. Uh, I follow his wife Julie. She's amazing, and I I, I want to move into their house. It's right on the lake. It's <laughs> that, that fire pit looks beautiful. Right? I'm very very Everyone jealous is, of it. There is they have a peacefulness in their life that I really admire, and I I don't know how to get it because they have two boys too. <laughs> so they figured something out that I have not. Um. But they are their their boys are wild too from the videos. But that being said, I don't think that matters. I think it has not historically mattered with Kirk Cousins. That what has mattered with Kirk Cousins going back to Washington has been I am going to get the best deal I possibly can based on what the market dictates. That mm -hmm. is what he has done at every single turn. The biggest question now becomes he's thirty five, his kids have been settled there for a little bit, he's been there for a really long time, he's made two hundred and thirty million dollars playing football. So is this the priority of we have to squeeze every cent we can out of this last one or this next one? Mm -hmm. Or is this a set of circumstances where you can go to Minnesota and say, listen, let's find a middle ground that works for us. I want to be paid commensurate to what I'm worth, but I don't have to make every single dollar. Can we find common ground here? Mm -hmm. Historically, that has not been the way that him and his team have operated but do we think this might be an exception because he's a little bit later in his career? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I, I'll tell you the answer. That is not it. <laughs> yeah, I, that, it, I, and I would. Be, uh, that's not surprising. I, I to me. don't get the sense that they're going to take a hometown discount on this. They're being they're aggressive. They should be aggressive, um, because they have interested teams. This exactly. is a different situation. If. Kirk is 38, coming off an injury. He wants maybe a two-year deal. That that's different. That that that's easy. He has suitors and legit yeah. ones, you know, and there's suitors that that I'm sure, or at least I think Kirk is on, on the radar of teams that haven't completely committed to bringing him in but are thinking about it. I've had a conversations. I know I had, I had a talk with a team that brought him up in one of their meetings. Um, so the fact that his market is as robust as it is right now, they, it would be bad business for him not to see what's out there as he can continue to just make so much money. Um, and, and maybe even have success if he gets dropped in on one of these teams that has a strong roster, that are ready to win now, and, 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 and may be in a better position than Minnesota. I, I think that there's absolutely a chance that's true. And so let's, let's figure out what the practical limits for Minnesota would be. I would say it would probably be like a, maybe a two-year deal so you can spread out some of the numbers, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you're paying him for one year. Let's say, optimistically, that includes like $55 million guaranteed if it's that short term of a deal. Derek Carr got $100 million guaranteed last year in free agency. Kirk Cousins has played at a higher level than Derek Carr recently, even if he's a little bit older. So why wouldn't you be able to get a markup on the Derek Carr contract that pays you $45 million a year that includes more than $100 million in guarantees if you're Kirk Cousins? Yeah, I think, you probably would. I think that's probably what he's going to get. So why would you consider it a short-term deal with Minnesota? Correct. Because it doesn't make sense given the market. So it must have been about eight years ago. Um, I'm on television and... And, and Kirk had gotten some new gigantic deal, and they had asked me what I thought about it. And I, and at the time, I just didn't think Kirk was that good. And I expressed my opinion. And I have, like, four missed phone calls from Bill Parcells. 
why is he calling me? Like, that's weird, right, to call someone that much. So during commercial break, I call. I actually thought something was like he got sick or something. So I said, Coach, what's going on? He said, do never talk about a man's money on television like that. The market dictates how much he's paid. It has. N- I don't care if Kirk never throws a touchdown again. The market dictates his worth, and I never forgot it. And so, as much as I want to sit here and go, God, those numbers are so high. The market dictates it. Yeah, and that, and that's and with quarterbacks, it's always going to be more than you think. It's always going to be more than you think every single time. And I think this might be another example of that. So let's, with that market in mind, what do you think is the most likely outcome? You can even get as team specific as you want to. I think Kirk winds up leaving Minnesota. Okay. I, I I can't turn my back on just the way he's operated in the past. Yeah. And 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 look, I've do you think there's a likely suitor? I do. I, I think I think there's a real I th- look. All you need is one, right? Yeah. But I think he has more than one. I think he has a, a really good market with teams that are willing to pay that. And look, I've had multiple conversations with him over the years. His values of family and the things that they're doing there and their comfort in Minnesota. But I, I think he knows that the right thing to do is to take this money and and perhaps win. Look, his wife's from Atlanta. Could that be a possibility? That would make sense. Could he go back to Washington? I mean, I don't know of that, but it would that make sense to you, right? So you're Dan Quinn. You got a first, you got a new owner, first time GM, first time head coach, a lot of new. Now you're gonna bring in a rookie. That's a lot of new everything. Yeah. Why not bring in a guy like Kirk Cousins, who's been there before, knows how to win, sets the culture. Here's what I would say. And trade your pick back. Here's what I I think that I understand how that makes sense to a degree, but I think that every time teams do that, when they're in a position to draft a guy and they pass on the opportunity, those opportunities are less frequent than you think they are. It's true. And so there are so many coaches that I, I've talked to that in the moment we talk about quarterbacks. And I'm like, well, how are you going to get one? And their response is always like, yeah, we'll figure it out. Like we want to be competitive and we want to build it this way. And then I'll be having a conversation with the same coach two years later. He's like, yeah, we probably should have more urgency at quarterback. Yep, and unbelievable. So, and I just think that I've seen that song play out so many times that even if it make, and I think another really good example is San Francisco, right? San Francisco passes on Watson, they pass on Mahomes, and then they sign Jimmy G because they have to. And now you're in this arranged marriage thing when you're operating from a position of kind of mild desperation because you didn't have another avenue to get one. When in reality, if you're if you have a top three pick in a draft with quarterbacks and you don't have a franchise quarterback on your roster, just take the guy. You take it. Just take the guy because you don't want to be in a position two years ago where, oh, we built up the rest of the roster. We got to a moderate place. We're an eight-win team. Now you're picking 19th, and you have no avenues to a guy who could potentially be a difference maker. Yeah, I think my theory or perhaps my suggestion of Washington doing that is really probably playing a little scared knowing it's so new there. Totally. But, but teams do that all the time. They don't want to make a splashy move correct. in year one. And look, you have Adam Peters who's picking the quarterback. The last quarterback he picked didn't work out too well. So maybe there's a little pressure there. Maybe that pressure could be relieved by bringing in a veteran. There is. I don't know why I'm about selling your cousins to the but, commanders but right I think, now. But I think this is a good thought exercise because think about how truncated that timeline is. Adam Peters gets hired, what, January 10th? Pretty much. Let's say. So then you have three and a half months to make a franchise-altering decision that will shape the next five years of your organization. Correct. That is not a lot of time. And I think that's why we've seen other organizations punt on it early because they don't think we don't have nearly enough figured out or set up to say this is the right guy at this moment. So Josh Harris, the owner of the Commanders, is here in Indy, and he's been meeting with the quarterbacks along with the, you know, the rest of the front office and the coaching staff. And, and I think a lot of Commander fans, or even just fans in the NFL, hear owner, and they immediately freak out. There's so much PTSD with Washington. Correct. I mean, There's the and last thing they want. Trust me, well aware. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 well yeah, you, aware. You know. I, I was there for all those Dan Snyder years. So you, you, just anything where the owner, the, the owner can't even like, like text the word Commanders, you know, without fans <laughs> freaking out. So you bring up a phenomenal point about just – not a lot of time to make a gigantic business decision here. I think it's smart to have everyone involved. Get as many yeah. minds and, and, and uh, people involved as possible who are going to be part of this just to get a feel for what are we, what, what we going to do. And listen, I, I've had conversations with Washington to try to figure out what, it, what are they doing exactly. And, you know, you, you, 
the good old, we're, we're just trying to get as much information as possible sounds lazy and boring. It's the truth. I believe them. I do think they're just trying to figure out everything so they can make the best decision. Having your owner sit in on those conversations and being a fly on the wall and being curious about the process, if he's not the one ultimately driving it, I think is a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah, and how many quarterback interviews have has he sat in on? Probably not a lot. Yes. Right. So just to like you how said, how do my people think? How, what do they want to know? What does this com- What does this process look like? I think that is only a good thing if you are willing to take a back seat and be a quiet voice in that room rather than the one that's dictating the conversation. So I just want to let you know, our boss Stephen Ginsburg is now going to join the podcast and sit. And that's watch fine. Us. I would love that. Shout I- out Ginsburg.